What's been the biggest factor in my success of building an online business that has done millions in sales? Consistent content creation. perfect record of publishing blogs and videos twice a week, every week for over five years now. What's my secret? Well, as much as I'd like to say I'm superhuman or have a team the size of Beyonce's, that is not the case. The real key is my editorial calendar in Asana. So for the longest time, my team and I just could not figure out a good system for how to house our editorial calendar. We tried Google Calendar, which was kind of confusing. When we switched around dates that content would be published on, it got really messy. Also, it was difficult to see when we were creating the content and then when it would actually get published. And it was a bit of a problem because we were using two different systems to manage the same thing, both Google Calendar for the editorial calendar and then Asana for managing all of the steps that would go into creating that content. Our messy system was definitely causing us problems and there was a few close calls on almost not getting our content out on time because of it, which is exactly what an editorial calendar is supposed to help you avoid. So in the end, I came up with a new system all completely inside Asana, which is an absolute dream for us to use. Now, this system works if you're creating content solo or if you have a team who helps you with that content creation. In this video, I'm going to take you from scratch. We're gonna go from a blank template in Asana to a system which allows you to manage all of your content creation steps and tasks, as well as the publishing schedule schedule, the ideas list, and more all inside of Asana. First, I want to show you the finished version, and then I'm going to show you how to actually set the thing up too. Okay, so this is what your editorial calendar is going to look like when it has been created. So here I have in calendar view a project in Asana, and I have all of my content ideas on the different dates that the things will get published. Then also my content ideas are color coded. So if I open up one of the content ideas, then I have different statuses. So I have status one is it's an idea and it needs outlining. Status two is that it needs recording. Status three is it needs editing. Status four is needs preparing and scheduling. And status five is it's actually done. So as I change the status, the item will change color here. And so this is really helpful because and I've also, you'll notice, I arranged the statuses so that the closer it is to being finished, the darker the color. So it starts off with light gray, status two is yellow, status three is light green, status four is dark green, status five is dark gray. And so I can just tell from immediately looking at the calendar, like how close are these different pieces of content to being like ready to actually be like published. So um, that is the color coding system. The other thing which is really convenient about this system is that all of the tasks for creating the content, when we used to use Google, calendar, it would be like one calendar, which was the actual published dates, and then another calendar, which was when the different steps of actually creating the items would get finished and it just got really confusing. So what I have here is when I click into one of the items, then we have the subtasks, which are all the steps with creating the item. And so I would go ahead and assign that to someone and then assign the date for that thing to be done. And so I can both have my editorial calendar with everything laid out for the dates it's published while still having separate tasks and dates for the one things need to get created, if that makes sense. The other beneficial thing about this is that it's really easy to change up the published date of something without just messing everything else up. So if say, for example, this content idea number 13 was an interview with someone and they had scheduled in for an interview and so I had that booked and everything, but then they needed to cancel for some reason, then I could easily move this. So let's say I would move this idea here and then I would move the other ideas to where they need to go. And so it just makes it very simplistic moving the items is very easy. And then again, it doesn't mess up any of your like subtasks for actually creating the piece of content. And so anyone, if we've switched things, I don't really need to communicate with the team. Like, hey, by the way, idea number 13 has been moved or whatever, because I could just go to the editorial calendar and see whatever the latest date that the thing is on is the date that that's supposed to be scheduled to publish. That is what the editorial calendar looks like. And again, so this is like, these are the published dates. We have the statuses so that we know where things are. I have a template actually, this is how I do it. Um, content template dupl duplicate. I duplicate this and then I'll name it like content idea four, whoops, 14, create new. It will create that idea here. I can drop it onto whatever date I want it on. I just move the template basically like a few weeks ahead so it doesn't kind of mess up with my beautiful calendar. 
So then I have my new content idea put on to the calendar and then you'll notice in here, I just have practical bits which are pretty much always needed in the project. So the episode number, so let's say it's 114. I have an outline script, which I always reminds me of the important bits to make sure I have in every video. Um, so I have my outline script, it, the template is right there. So I click on that, I duplicate it, I make a script for that specific video, and then I paste the script text into here. Um, I also am always reminding myself, okay, I need to call to action in this video, or I need to send this video to that video and direct people to that video at the end of the video. So then I would also where things should be going. So say, if I want to link to my quiz, is also helpful for the editor of the video who's actually putting it together and scheduling it and everything to know like this is the place that things should be sending to afterwards. And then again, it automatically duplicates all the subtasks as well. So that is super convenient. So that is what the calendar looks like how the duplicating works, and then the different sort of statuses happening as well. Now, the other thing which I have is the list of ideas, I have a heading, and then all the list of ideas under that heading. So for example, when I am just walking around in life and I have a content idea, um, I go ahead and I add it to my ideas list. I find it useful, like sometimes I've done research, some SEO tool or through YouTube, or maybe I like took a course or something and it suggested like, here's top like five amazing content ideas that you need to have on your channel, for example. So I have all my ideas list and I actually did start adding headings so that I would remember where that idea came from. And so I try to kind of like mix things up, like some ideas which are just my own, some ideas which come from research, those sorts of things. And if you wanted to create something similar for yourself, let me walk you through the steps of how to create this. So I'm going to add a team. Granted, you might have a team inside of your sauna already, which would make sense for this. So something like if you have like a marketing team or whatever, then perfect. If not, you can add a team. Then underneath marketing, that's where I just add a project called, I name it editorial calendar. So I just go for a blank project, create it called editorial calendar. I'm gonna create one right here. Good, continue. So from here for the ideas list, you're just adding section headings. So my ideas. And then we're adding in actual tasks to that. So content. And then I'm going to drag these under the relevant headings. And then I also have ideas on calendar. So I don't actually move these tasks over to, you know, the calendar view, which had the tasks and sort of like the duplicating that project or whatever. The reason I don't move them from here over to here is because each ideas item doesn't have sort of that like template of the subtasks and everything which I want. So let's go ahead together and create that. Let me show you this content template to duplicate. We're gonna go to our editorial calendar and calendar. And here I'm going to paste in the details that I typically have. If you find there's something that like every single video you need to whatever it is, then be sure to pop it in there. And then I also need all the subtasks. Perfect. So I have my subtasks, I have all these things. So the, again, the reason that I'm not taking these items from the list and then moving them over to the calendar is because then it wouldn't have all the bits and pieces, which I want to have duplicated basically. So if I have an idea, which I decide to use, I have another section called ideas on calendar. And I just move this down to here to basically say like, I've used this idea. And then inside of my calendar. So when I decide, okay, I want to take content idea number three, for example, this, I don't actually, it's not content idea number three in mine. It's like whatever the name, the title of the actual item is, is what goes in there, FYI. So I would go to content template to duplicate, duplicate task, and then create new, and then it will create that item. And then I just drag that content idea to wherever I want it in my editorial calendar. I typically sit down once a month and I go into my giant list of ideas and I decide on which ones I really like. And then I drag them down um, to put them or I put them into my calendar down here. So back into my calendar. So I have my different items. Then I go ahead and I start adding the tags to them. So add tag and I put automatically, it's an idea and it needs to be outlined. Perfect, that's the first thing. Let's say for this one, I've actually um, outlined it. Now I just need to record it. So then I would assign the relevant tag. So basically you duplicate the content template to duplicate. 
Then you put in the name of whatever that item is, and then you go ahead and you start working within that task. Now the main task doesn't actually get like assigned to anyone really, it's just the subtasks that get assigned to people. I would assign this to myself, I would set the date for it, and I would take it off when I've done it. Same thing, I would assign this to myself, assign a date to it, actually do the task, then check it off. And then for the later ones, if you have a team um, who helps you with your content creation, then you would maybe assign editing the video or uploading and scheduling it to whichever team member is responsible for that. They can at any time come into the main task so if they're in, say, one of these subtasks, they can come at any time to the main task and just see like when is that thing going to be published, if that makes sense. So honestly, it's pretty simplistic once you get it set up. It's not that complicated to use, but it is extremely efficient. It's extremely organized and this system truly works perfectly for us. This is just been a dream to use since moving over from our like mishmash of Google Calendar and Asana. So yeah, that is exactly how it works. Now, even though you might have your editorial calendar set up, you still might struggle to publish consistently. Why? Because the rest of the back end of your business is disorganized and that's causing domino effect problems through your entire business, including getting your content out on time. So watch this video next to learn exactly how I organize my entire business and team inside of Asana, how we task batch and generally run a super productive business.